Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Dennis. So today we're going to do the Master Air G100M made by Cooler Master. It is a low profile CPU cooler. We're going to put it on a system right now. It still has a stock cooler on it. And um, yeah, hopefully uh, we'll get some good temps from it. So here we go. So here's our first look at the uh, cooler. And let's get it out of the box. Okay, so after getting everything out of the box, here you see the box, that's the cooler itself. You got your little installation guide down here, it just shows you how everything is done. And of course all your brackets and everything, and we'll get to that in a little bit. So before we go too far, here is a list of all your um, parts that come in the box. Okay, all the contents. Okay, something to keep in mind because you're going to need to know which one applies to your install. Because it will work for both AMD or Intel. This is going to be an Intel install, just so you know. So here's another look at all the parts as they're laid out. Of course, you've got your back plate, wrench to tighten things. It even comes with some cool thermal paste if you need it. Um, it's always a good thing to have included. And of course, our low profile cooler. And we'll have a better look at that in a while as we go to install it and all our other little pieces. And I'll show you how that all goes together. And something else to keep in mind is keep in mind that this is a RGB cooler, okay? But as with most of these coolers that they make, if you don't have RGB on your motherboard, it will still work. There are ways to just avoid using the RGB and just have it work just as the cooler itself without the fancy colors. Some people don't like the colors, so it's all good. Okay, so a couple things to keep in mind before you start. Okay, so I've separated these two cables. Now, this one is your RGB. Okay, so you're going to connect this. You're going to have these pieces over here. Now, this is if you don't have a motherboard that supports RGB. Okay, because it's going to work with Aurora Sync, the RGB uh, PolySync, I think it is called from uh, AS Rock, uh, Gigabyte, all the main, main manufacturers. So you're going to take this little device here. It's going to plug in here. Okay, it just pushes in. And then you have to line up the arrows. There's arrows on both sides. So make sure you line those up. And just plug it in. And that will allow you to use the controls here. If you don't have a motherboard with RGB to control the lighting and speed effects and breathing and all that kind of good stuff. So you do not have to have this. Like this has this little connector here, right? So if you're going to use it, this is going to go in here. So, so that's going to go in here right on the end. Okay, you're going to line it up, push it in, and then this is going to be controlled with a Molex. Now again, all that being said, if you have a motherboard with RGB, you don't need any of this. So you can just set that aside, which is what I'm going to do. And this... I'll plug into your uh, RGB on your motherboard and you're good to go. And if you don't have RGB, you don't want to use RGB, you can just scroll up together, just tidy it up and just use this connector. Okay, it's a four pin connector and you're just going to connect that to your motherboard on your CPU fan. All right, a couple other things. Um, it's got a bit of a height, but you're going to have to make sure that you have room for your RAM clearance because okay, uh, it's going to be pretty tight and in some cases I've seen where the first RAM slot uh, is, is not allowing you space to use it so if you're going to occupy all four spaces that could be an issue so something to keep in mind okay so something else to keep in mind is the back plate can be a bit confusing because it shows here Intel so you're thinking okay so the Intel should be here it's actually right here these little thin ones. Okay, so don't confuse this. This is the AMD one. That's the Intel one. So on the back, you're going to see there's little slots. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate here. All, you're going to use these, these ones here. Regardless of what you're doing, whether it be AMD or Intel, you're going to use those same pieces. So your Intel is here. And there's a little groove. Right, so you're just going to slide that into it. Of 
and it will move there's three spots depending on which uh, Intel build you're going to do and these longer ones okay those ones there are the ones that are going to hold it in place and there's three little grooves so when you put it on you can readjust them after depending on which one you want to do okay it'll just pry up and you can move it so make sure you put that on all four, all four corners and then once you're done it'll turn over this will pop up from the back and then everything else is going to go on top okay just to make sure that's clear so I wanted to show you this as well so you can see the little holes here okay so if you got a motherboard that's old and it's 775 goes to the far left 1150 series goes in the middle and if you've got one that's a 2066 2011 all these different versions even as far back as 1366 it goes to the far right okay even shows you how to install your brackets all that kind of good stuff which I'm going to show you too but just uh, for an Intel build that helps you with uh, knowing which slot you want it to lock in place so the next thing to keep in mind is which bracket do you need to put on your cooler you've got the longer ones here and the shorter ones the shorter ones are going to be the ones for the Intel install when you put them on I'm just going to show you here okay reason you'll know is because when you line them up they're going to fit the length here if you go just use the other ones they're going to be too long so when you put them on your actual cooler okay you're just going to put them underneath here so keep in mind see that little lip okay so it's going to go underneath here and it's going to fit in there and you should be able to line up your holes and then you're just going to use your little screws okay so these little screws here and you're going to tighten them okay so once you have it installed it should look just like that so once you've got your brackets on this is what it's going to look like all right and these are going to be used later so these parts here so far these are what are going to be used in, in amd build okay so set those aside if you're doing an amd install like they're going to say actually i find amd install these days much easier than intel just the way it is for some reason so maybe one day i'll do another one of these but it put it in an amd install because it'll just be easier but for now this is the intel install next we're going to go and put it on the motherboard do all that kind of good stuff but before we do that let's go to the other system let's fire it up let's run some temps off the stock cooler that's on it see what we're getting right now and once we're done then we'll run it after we do the install okay so we started our test with uh, ada 64 i'm using the trial version i do have the licensed version but i'm not going to put it onto this computer so what i'm going to show you is down here we're running at 100 uh, percent utilization and up here our temps right now are at 57. so pretty good for a stock cooler actually so we're gonna let that run for a little bit see how it goes right now it's so far it's been running for a minute and 37 seconds uh, it looks like it's hitting around 59 so I'm gonna let it run for about five minutes and then we're gonna see what our uh, temps are so here we're having a look at the cores as well these are our current temperatures for the different cores and so far the max is we're hitting at CPU seems to be about 61 so anyway, we'll go back to the temperatures and that's pretty much what it's showing over here and we're at about the uh, three and a almost four minute mark right now and right now we had jumped up to about 63 there a second ago so hopefully we put this new cooler on it'll be better than the stock cooler but you never know okay so we're at the five minute mark we never got higher well right there 65 degrees so 65 degrees seems to be our top so we're going to take this uh, stock cooler off put on the other one and see what we get okay so you can see this is our intel stock cooler so you're going to take it off there's four little tabs here you're just going to turn them pull them out and pull it out but that's not what the video is about this is just about installing it so i'm going to remove that and then we're going to show how to put the new one on so just in case you are wondering about uh, taking it off this turns there's an arrow on here turn it toward the uh the way the arrow is going okay once all the arrows are facing the right direction these should pop out okay, those two did and 
So the top one, and then we can do the bottom one. Oh, we turn that. Oops. Make sure. And now that should pop out. Now, you're going to have the thermal paste on here, which is going to almost act like as a kind of a glue. So it's not going to come right off. So you are going to have to wiggle it just a little bit to get it to come off. So it'll be maybe a little tight, but no big deal. And these are off all but one. And there we go. Now, thing to remember, you're plugged up in here for a CPU cooler, so you're going to have to unplug that before you can put the next one back on. Okay? Now we're ready to install our new one. And don't forget, you're going to have to remove your old uh, thermal paste and reapply it. Because the new one does not have thermal paste uh, on it. And don't forget, before you put it on, don't forget to uh, remove this little sticker here. Okay, make sure you take that off. But you do it just before you're going to put it on. Peel that back. And then you're going to apply it. So there was no, uh, with an Intel stop cooler, it just, there's no back plate. So anyway, we're going to put our uh, back plate on. So that's the one we initially had to start with. And it's going to go on with that facing the back. So you're just going to line those holes up. Hopefully I've got them all lined up properly. If I don't, I will readjust. Once I've got them all readjusted, now I'm going to turn it back around, holding it in place, and then we're going to have to go through and fasten it on with these. Okay, and that'll just put it in there. You have to be a little careful. First one is in. And that'll hold that in place. But now we gotta go and uh, I'm gonna do that to all four. Put all four of them in there. And then I'm gonna remove the thermal paste, reapply thermal paste, and put the cooler on. But I'll show you all that. Okay, so now we're gonna remove our thermal paste. You can just get something like this. It's rubbing alcohol compound. Okay, this is 95% ethanol. Okay, so just dab a little bit on here. And then you're just going to wipe it off. Just wipe this off. Be careful, don't get too much on there. It's going to take a little bit to get it off. Okay. Don't worry about how long it takes you. Just make sure you get it all off. Now we can see our CPU. And in case anybody's wondering, it is an i5 4690K. So one of my big concerns right now is, do I have enough clearance to put it in past the memory? Because if this butts up against it and it's not high enough, well, our cooler install is not going to happen. So let's find out. First, we're going to install our air thermal paste. I'm using a thermal paste that came with the uh, cooler itself from Cooler Master that provided it. And keep in mind, there's many schools of thought on how to do this. There's the dab of rice, there's the X. I like to do a cross because I find that that just gives me a little more coverage. So just put it on here. Just be, don't worry about it too much. And just be careful not to get it over your motherboard. So that is how I'm putting it on right there. Some people like to do just a little rice and some people like to spread it all over the entire thing. It'll spread when you push it down anyway. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Okay, so this is where you want to make sure to take this off because now you're going to put it on to your CPU. So peel this off and it's a real pain because it keeps wanting to go back on. So don't touch the surface. Peel that off. And now we're going to install it. Now you have to line these up, okay, these here, with your screws. And of course it's the center. So hold on to your cables. And you want to orient it so that you have your 
where your CPU plugs in, which mine is at the front up here. So make sure I got that right, and we're just going to set it on. So it does fit down really nicely, but here's my biggest concern, and they do this quite often, is you're kind of blocked on fastening that down. So I'm wondering if there's something I missed. So anyway, I've got it on there now. I know it's going to fit. That was my biggest concern. Okay, so it's on there. It's not moving. It's exactly where I want to be. But we have a couple other things I need to put on there first. So, okay, so the next thing you have to do is these little pieces here. Okay, you're going to have to put that down and tighten it. But there's very little room to work with in here. So it's going to take a bit of doing to get that all in there and fasten down. And it's almost impossible for me to see a little film. So unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to show you that. But I will try and show you after I've got it on. Um, maybe just by moving my phone down there and focusing in on it a little bit. Okay, so at first I thought I was going to have to take the motherboard out. But I didn't. So you can see these little, little wa for washer, whatever you want to call them. Okay. So you had to put those on. And then you had to use that little wrench thing to tighten them down. Which is this right here. Okay, so you just put that on. And then just tighten it. And then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Just tighten that till it's nice and snug. And then you're going to have to do that on the other side as well. Now, this really nearly cost me taking out the motherboard. But once I moved the graphics card out of the way, then it gave me enough room on this side. So the other side, there's um, it's going to be harder. But if I can't get it out, then I'll take the motherboard out and do it that way. Okay, so I did have to take the motherboard out. But that's okay, I can show you this better now. So you put these two little things on top there, fasten them down. I've already done the ones on the other side that I just showed you. So now, this is what it looks like. And I'll just put the motherboard back on. We'll fire it up. And make sure it all goes in right. So the next thing you have to do, now, this case, this motherboard does not have RGB, I don't believe. So we are going to have to use that uh, RGB controller. Okay, so before we get worrying about the RGB, you're going to go to your 4-pin for your CPU. Now on here we got two of them. One is the CPU Fan 1, CPU Fan 2. We're going to put it in CPU Fan 1. Sorry, it's uh, turning around a little bit on me here. And make sure you find that little divot here. And you'll notice on your thing for your fan, there's a divot here. So just match those up and plug it in. And just like that. All right. Now, this is the one for the RGB, because we don't have RGB in this case, where we have to go to the other controller. So I showed you previously that we put this little metal piece in here, pushed it in. All right. And now this is going to connect to a Molex connector in your system now. Obviously, we don't like to connect to a Molex, but you got to do what you got to do. Now, that's our RGB. When you're lining them up, you want to look for that little arrow. And you want to look for the arrow on here. So, line them up. And once you got them in the right spot, it just pushes together. And then you're going to be able to control everything right here. Alright, once this plugs into the Molex for power, We'll be good to go. So I'm going to put everything back together and we're going to have a look at it. Okay, so our fan is on. I've hooked it up to the Molex to use the controller, which is right here. Okay, so when you use this, you get different settings. Okay, so the one on the far end, on the far right, one closest to where it connects, changes all your breathing pulsating, all that kind of good stuff. One in the middle. Changes your colors. And the one on the far end just seems to change the uh, to the variation of the same color. So with the green, so you can change how the green looks. There's different settings for it. 
and then we go back to a different color and you can see how it changes the blue for the pattern different brightnesses and stuff and that's how you control it I think it looks pretty cool but does it work let's do one more check for the temperatures and see what we get okay so we started our test here again 100% utilization of the CPU and hmm not seeing great scores so right now I'm looking at 53 I expected better to be honest but we'll let it run for a little bit and we'll see what happens so showing here well 54 is still better than uh, or 65 that we had after five minutes so we'll let this lapse and have a look okay so we've gone the full five minutes actually a little beyond and it stays right around 58 uh, I think I saw a max of 59 so I think there you have it it's it's better than a stock cooler I'm not sure it's a lot better so here you can see uh, and I actually haven't stopped it yet uh, that's our temperatures right there so max of 58 and actually uh, that's only on the current and all the other cores are running a little bit cooler than that you do have core number three which for some reason always seems to run a little bit higher sometimes but overall uh, we're getting pretty good scores out of this all right everybody so if you like that video hit that like think about subscribing leave me a comment tell me what you think um, I'm not sure if I recommend this or not it was kind of a bit of a pain to install um, getting in there underneath to put those little uh, um, nuts if you will I'm not sure what they're called to fasten it back down and just secure it uh, that, I had to take the motherboard in order to do it and I've never had to do that in the past to, to upgrade a cooler so to me that's poor design so it's up to you but if I mean if you're doing a initial installation on the motherboard uh, it's already out of the case which in a lot of a lot of times it is that's what people do it'll be fine but I'm not seeing the temperatures I'd expect from this cooler right I would have expected it to be a bit better so I'm gonna end this video I'm going to show you some uh, some of the details um, on the like the specs for the cooler and we'll just end off there thanks for watching don't forget to click those links those affiliate links have a look at them donate if you're uh, of a mindset to do so not required but much appreciated and uh, enjoy the stats thanks